Today I want to thank Apple for their generosity in their base model Mac Studio. Because what you see we're at an interesting time in computing history where most of us, and I really do mean most of us, have access to more computing power than we'll ever really need. When you look at what Apple has done recently with the M1 and the newly released M2 processors, you see an amazing progression all the way up to the M1 Ultra. We see this beautiful symbiosis between incredible speed, efficiency, and power consumption. And if I really just get to the point about what I'm trying to share here in this video, it's the fact that this base model Mac Studio actually gives my 28 core Mac Pro a run for its money using far less power. I mean, you can basically stop here, but I have to say that this base model machine is the most affordable supercomputing device you can purchase right now for creative work. For graphic designers, this is enough. For photographers, this is enough. For most video editors, this machine is enough. And that really is the craziest part. You see, because it used to be back in the day that we had to do more with less computing power. We had to squeeze as much productivity as we could out of hardware that struggled and used tons of wattage. I remember when spinning beach balls were just a normal part of daily creative life. Well, now is a far different time. And I mean, I barely have time to finish my cup of coffee when exporting video or photos. Before we go further in this video though, I do, I do want to say thank you for checking out this video today. And if you have subscribed, thank you so much. It helps me get content out faster. So if you have not already subscribed, please do so. Give me a thumbs up if you like today's video and ring that bell to get notified when I drop a new video. When we look at this base model Mac Studio, you get quite a lot for the money you're spending. You're getting 32 gigs of RAM, you're getting a 10 core CPU, you're getting 24 cores of GPU, 16 cores in the neural engine. You get all the ports you'll need. You get USB-A, USB-C, Thunderbolt ports on the back, gigabit ethernet, you get an SD card slot on the front. And all of this is inside of this tiny aluminum enclosure that runs pretty much silently on your desk. You'll never hear fans revving up. You'll barely pull more than 100 watts of power at max loads, which is crazy and bizarre. And for graphic design and photography, this machine screams. It's wicked fast and as responsive as your brain synapses can do their thing. For designers and photographers, if you really need more speed, you must be a very busy person to feel like you need to get 10 seconds back because your export times were too slow. But seriously, okay, I hear you. You're like, well, Johnny, the base model, bro, it's only 512 gigs of storage. That is not enough. But here's the thing, hear me out. Let's say your current machine you have right now, your old machine, has one terabyte of storage. And you're like, there's no way I can move to this base model because I'm already using about half of my one terabyte drive in my old Mac right now. But here's the thing, I challenge you, go through your old Mac right now, clean it up, clean it up. And that was the case with me. I had several apps I wasn't using, so I uninstalled those. 
I updated my Dropbox to online only. I deleted cache files. You can even just start with a fresh OS install. And once I did that, I was using less than half of the 512 gigabytes of storage that this offers. And with the fast Thunderbolt ports on the back, you can purchase something like I did, which is a SanDisk Extreme Pro. I, I got the four terabyte version, which is super fast storage at a much lesser price than adding that to the build to order option. And I'll put a link below for that drive that I purchased. So there you go. In this tiny package, you get so much power and you also gain valuable desk space. And with that valuable desk space, you get more room for accessories like this nifty little iPhone iPad stand. Check it out. So this iPad slash iPhone stand is from a company called Lamical. And they reached out to me and sent me a couple of their amazing products. And I have to say that they are very well made with high quality metal and plastic construction. I mean, check out this stand. It holds iPhones and iPads and keeps them in view off, off of your desk. It's an inexpensive way to use your iPad as a second screen via Mac OS on the Mac Studio, making you more productive and efficient with a smaller footprint. They also make this nifty phone holder for your bike so when you're on the go, you can easily navigate keeping your phone in view and both hands on the handlebars. I highly recommend checking out their products. So you can use my links in the description below to purchase this stand or the bike phone holder and use code LEMMECALLBP for a 40% discount. And speaking of additional displays, this Mac Studio supports five displays in total. That's crazy. So we're talking four displays with resolutions up to 6K at 60 Hertz connected to the Thunderbolt ports and one HDMI display up to 4K connected to the HDMI port on the back. Man, that's bonkers insane. And when we compare this base Mac Studio to my 28 core Mac Pro, the numbers here do show that my Mac Pro is still faster for many things, but at a great cost in terms of size and wattage used. What did it cost? Everything. I'm guessing most of you watching this will be doing mostly photography, graphic design, and basic video production. So looking at things like exporting raw photos, this base model Mac Studio is only a few seconds slower than a 28 core Mac Pro. But I think my favorite highlight of my comparison journey between these two machines is looking at 4K C-Log3 422 raw video from my Canon R5. This type of codec is something I work with every day and the footage is incredibly taxing even on my 28 core Mac Pro and DaVinci Resolve. I mean looking at scrubbing through stuff and just working with it, it's brutal on the Mac Pro even with a Radeon 6800 XT inside. And no, I, I don't use proxies, I hate them because they, they just take up too much space. You can see here on the Mac Pro it's just not as smooth as I scrub through this. Look at it, how it drops frames. Look at this. Look how sad I am that it's dropping frames. But on this base Mac Studio, it's like butter. It shreds through the stuff like it's nothing. So if you use something like a Canon R5 and shoot C-Log3, for sure get a Mac Studio and save a crap ton of money. And I'm using the speed editor here to just scroll through the timeline. And that's what I mean by smooth like butter. Look at how fast this is just going through this. I mean, it's, it's just, it's killing it. Overall, I think the base Mac Studio is literally the best buy in the computing world right now. It's literally a complete creative studio contained in a beautiful, small metal enclosure, unlocking your true creative potential because it just simply gets out of the way, allowing you to innovate, create, and collaborate. Hey guys. Thank you so much for those of you that stuck around until the end of this video. I truly appreciate you guys. I truly do. I will see you guys in my next video. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments about the base model Mac Studio, and I will definitely answer those for you. I will see you guys in my next one.